Hey guys, CS here. Today we are going to be looking at Robot Arena, a robotic combat game for PC developed by Gabriel Interactive and published by Infograms in March 2001. This game was overshadowed by the much more popular Robot Arena 2 Design and Destroy in 2003, but let's take a look at the original Robot Arena and see what it's like. Now, just a quick history first, the idea for Robot Arena was born out of the late 90s and early 2000s robotic combat sport, popularized by several TV shows such as BBC's Robot Wars and Comedy Central's BattleBots. 13-year-old me was a huge fan of both shows at the time, and when I saw this game, I had to have it. As far as I know, Robot Arena was one of the first video games to capitalize on this sport, only to be preceded by Robot Wars Metal Mayhem for Game Boy Color in December of 2000. Anyways, enough history, let's get into the game. So, you start off with a very small amount of cash and are expected to build a remote controlled battle robot out of whatever components you can afford. You select your chassis type, outfit a power supply, add some wheels, weapons, and armor. Uh, you can also buy meaningless things like flags, headlights, a video camera, or a badge plate, which says it's customizable, but that is a complete lie. What you see here is pretty much the best robot you can build with your starting cash. Not even kidding about that. Here, let's give it a paint job and a name. So once you've built your robot, one thing you can do is enter it into a 1v1 practice round versus an AI-controlled robot. Lucky for us, our dirt cheap battering ram is actually the most freaking useful weapon in this whole game. It's really quite a shame. <laughs> most of the cool weapons like circular saws and lawnmower blades are horribly ineffective, cause very little damage and can be snapped right off. Just look at how easily I'm snapping the saws off of poor gamma rays here. I mean, the weaponry strength is poorly balanced to say the least. Outside of the battering ram, my favorite weapons are probably axes and the pneumatic air rams, although they require a lot of compressed air tanks to be of any use. And wait, why the hell are we sticking compressed air tanks on the outside of the robots where they can be easily destroyed? Ugh, the logic of this game. Some of the other weapons are highly questionable, like a radio jammer? <laughs> Yeah, you can prevent your opponent from moving at all with this thing. Something tells me this wouldn't be legal in an actual robotic combat event. Anyways... One of the big issues with this game is the lack of a physics engine. The robots are essentially glued to the floor, and every hit just feels like two giant cement blocks bumping into each other. It's also not uncommon for bots to get hopelessly stuck to the wall, or stuck to each other due to lack of appropriate collision physics. It's very possible to get stuck for the entire match, and trust me, it is not as much fun to win a match by judge's decision. Another frustrating thing about this game is the representation of damage. There are no deformable meshes to make it feel like you're truly crushing your opponent. The only indicators of chassis damage are very crappy looking dents and billowing smoke from the back of the box, which gets blacker as it nears death. Of course, you could outfit a diagnostic transmitter to see a status bar of your opponent's health and drivetrain if you really want. On top of that, the sounds are pretty darn repetitive. The same hit noises, the exact same cheer from the audience. It just gets boring. And, as satisfying as it may be to break off individual parts of your opponent's box, it's completely unnecessary since destroying the main chassis is the only requirement for victory. And yes, the robot will explode into a million pieces 100% every single time. I'm pretty sure that never happened on Robot Wars or BattleBots, but hey, I know, it's just a game. Most arenas are outfitted with hazards, usually some form of spikes or saws. They don't deal much damage, but if you can get your opponent to go on top of one, it can be entertaining watching them take small amounts of damage, and oftentimes get completely stuck. So, after you've had enough practicing against dimwit AI bots, you can enter tournament mode and compete against... 7 more dimwit AI bots. <laughs> And that leads into one of the huge reasons this game failed. 
The AI is, uh, well, it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't react, doesn't really attack, and it fails miserably at navigating certain arenas. Occasionally, your opponent will move around and maybe activate a weapon or two, but all in all, the AI programming is a disaster, and really one of the things Gabriel Interactive should have fixed prior to the game's release. Thanks to this, winning the tournament is freaking easy and can be done by anyone in about 12 minutes. <laughs> no wonder 13 year old me liked this game so much. It's worth mentioning that in between each round of tournament mode, you have the chance to repair damaged parts of your robot before moving on to the next round, which adds a tiny dose of realism. But hey, there's honestly not much for me to repair. Even the final menacing opponent, Executioner, suffers from terrible AI. Sorry, Spike Ass, it doesn't matter how deadly your robot looks if it gets stuck on every obstacle and won't freaking fight! Yay, I won already! So after you win the super unimpressive trophy, you can enter a custom challenge, which is basically replaying any opponent from tournament mode and wagering a sum of cash. And whoa, 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 why, why has some of my opponents already taken damage? Like, why is this guy's mobility only 85%? <laughs> there are some things I just don't understand here. Either way, you're probably going to win. So after a few of these matches, you'll become instantly wealthy and can build any kind of robot your heart desires. Within the limitation of how many slots are available on the chassis, of course. Now, I do have to note there was a patch available after the game's release, which improved the AI, making it more aggressive, and added a completely new lineup of opponent bots for tournament mode, some of which actually put up a fight. In addition, there were some new weapons added, like the cool Switchblade used by Urban Menace. Still, I don't know how many people actually knew about this patch, and it surely didn't fix any of the other flaws of the game. Lastly, the game does have multiplayer mode versus one human opponent via local network or internet, but, uh... Still, it kinda gets old quickly. All in all, Robot Arena was a mildly fun game that I appreciated much more as a kid than I do looking back on it now. If it weren't for the terrible AI, lack of physics, and the bots getting completely stuck, this might not have been so bad. Leap two years into the future and out came Robot Arena 2, which thankfully learned from the mistakes of its predecessor by including a proper physics engine, deformable meshes, much greater bot customization, the ability to place components freely inside and outside the chassis, battles with up to four players, better multiplayer support, and just better everything. <laughs> but hey, I'll leave that for a future review.